All right, all right, all right, guys. Welcome. We are back in the fly bar. It is January 13th. All right, all right, all right. Here we go. This is the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel. My name is Shannon. We're going to go fast today if we can, possibly, because I know I slow down as time goes by. We're well into January of 2022, and despite the raging virus, I lost a week. Yep, I was isolated. Had the uh, Omicron. Um, things are really pushing ahead, though, here in North Texas. Let me tell you, though, first things first, I'm rearranging the way these videos are shot. Um, not necessarily shot, but the way they're put in order as far as the order of things. I call it rearranging the, uh, the deck chairs on the Titanic, actually. This baby's sinking fast. So, the state report today comes after I highlight a product that just came on my radar. So I want to show you a brand new product to me. Um, they may have been around a while, but I'm not a conventional guy. So some of these things don't get to me as quickly as they get to you. Um, and what it is, is actually uh, a thin Plano 3700 box. You know, the original boxes are, uh, are like this right here. Um, basically I have dozens and dozens of these. They're about that thick, you know, and uh, I label these so that I know what, what's in them. I've got dozens of them, a bunch. Well, I was on, uh, you know, looking at the shelves, probably I was trying to spend a gift certificate or something. And guess what I found? This is the 3701. The 3701, as you can see, is a little more than half as thick, a little bit more than half as thick, as the original 3700. Now, 3700 is legendary Plano box. Legendary. Um, and in this configuration, it actually has the uh, rust away type dividers in it. I, uh, I put those in, I switch out my boxes about every five, five years probably, and just update them to, uh, so the snaps, you know, the snaps actually, <laughs> there's a snap missing on this one. So that'll get taken out of circulation and used for uh, nuts and bolts or something like that. So get yourself. The 3701s, they're about 10 bucks. They're a little more expensive for a smaller box, but the thickness difference, you can see just about a little more than half as thick as the 3700. And what makes this so great is when you're like me, if you're either traveling or you are, you know, backpacking with flies, I, I hate going distance, whether it's 50 miles or 500 miles, which is more typical is 500 and not having all the flies I would possibly consider having. And I, you know, usually the guys that go along with or I go along with them, um, I give them all the flies they need too uh, when we're on the road. So that's how that works. Um, 3701 by Plano. It says 5-34 on the front. I think that's just five across and 34 possibilities. Imagine these boxes for your tiny flies for trout flies and for carp flies and things like that. Absolutely perfect. So that's the Plano 3700 guys. 3701 actually. Get you some of those, swap them out, get rid of the old thick ones and uh, you will be much happier. On the report, here we go. If you look in the, if you look in the description, there's going to be a written kind of play by play on this and there's going to be minute markers in there so you can cut through this stuff any way you want. It's short sleeve weather guys. Check this out. Short sleeves on January the 13th. I can't believe it. I just cannot believe it. What we've got is a normal winter time in North Texas where these fronts come and go quickly. Um, it stirs things up and settles down, stirs things up and settles down. For example, the, it's probably 70 here on the fly bar today. Oh, dang it, there's another fly. Okay, fly bar, what can I say? Um, probably 70 here. And at 70 degrees, we are uh, expecting 14 degrees. Hello, youngster. There's another dog in the house. Look at this guy. Whoa, new collar. Anyway, we're expecting 14 degrees on Sunday. Can you believe it? 14, 70 minus 14 is 56 degree variation in 
48 hours. Today's eh, 72 hours in. Today's Thursday the 13th. Thank God it's not Friday. So that's what's happening. But what you've got on the coast, and you got to keep this in mind on the Texas Gulf Coast, these fronts come and go fast, and not all of them get there because they don't have the, the sweep or the reach to get all the way down there. So what, what you got to realize is that you'll get about mm, one, one third less of the fronts that we get, and they won't be as severe. The day before, when you're overcast and unsettled weather, barometric pressure is still low, fish. Day of, day of the front, forget about it. The day after the front, if things have settled down, it's just a one day pass through and there's no, no fluctuations in it going back and forth. Bluebird, on the bluebird, you know what to do. You hit the water. And right now, the temperatures on the coast, what I'm seeing on the coast is that the temperatures don't match up in the report and in reality, because somehow or another, there's some kind of discrepancy in the t water temperatures when you watch that scroll at the end, and please watch the scroll because there's some highlighted red information on there that is very uh, interesting to me. Texas Parks and Wildlife now has fishing reports that endorse, for lack of a better word, fishing guides who help with the report. Now the person who assembles the report gets paid to do that. It's a contract from the state of Texas. I'm wondering about that, and I've got some information that I'm trying to get to see if there's a little conflict of interest there. You can imagine all the uh, possibilities for uh, um, conflicts, put it that way, um, with uh, names and guide services in the state of Texas's report. Okay, enough of that. Okay, um, I'm very happy about the weather and it being very normal, and that means that hopefully, uh, and I am hopeful that um, we'll have a normal season of carp on the fly here in North Texas, as well as everything else that we're going after. So, very optimistic as, as of January 13th. We'll see what happens on January 16th. <laughs> now, if you're in the hill country, guys, best of times, best of times. Water's cooled down. If you're on the Guad, Guadalupe River, Stalker City, baby. You can catch all you want. Keep in mind that it's always good to be a member of Trout Unlimited and GRTU, that's Guadalupe River Trout Unlimited. I'm a life member of Trout Unlimited. Not, I'm just very glad to have that. Very glad to have provided that support in the past. Um, GRTU, Guadalupe River Trout Unlimited. Those guys have m trophy areas that they stock. Well, they can't fence them off. So if you can float, you can float through the trophy areas and fish just like the people that are paying arm and a leg to have permit access. It's just a little, it's not a secret really, it's just common sense. I took things out of order, I've told you about the Texas Gulf Coast. Um, watch the pressure drops and watch for day after and day before fronts. Flies. This comes from Stacy Lynn, www.wowflyfishing.com, women on the water, flyfishing.com very nice person and she was helping me out with a guy that was going to the coast here's what she said will be your flies on the texas gulf coast right now seducers seducers is what they really are tied weightless and with bead chains so we're talking very shallow with lead dumbbells with tiny lead dumbbells and in black and tan black and in tan so you want you know those that are a little more natural or represent um, highlighting against the sky. Use your blacks on cloudy and overcast days, tans on the other days. Redfish crack and my articulated fly that I like a lot, look it up on my on my list of videos under fly tying, the redfish meth fly. That's an articulated crack fly. Only one thing better than crack, right? And that's meth. <laughs> Not really people, I don't do drugs. Don't you do drugs either. Then there's the merkin, merkin style crab with bead chains, some lead dumbbells, tan and olive, you know, go-tos, those are go-tos. This is inshore, so in the mid coast, uh, you know, the idea there is to not get too deep, and not have to get too deep. That's according to Captain Stacy Lynn, those are your flies, w -O -W, w -O -W flyfishing.com. and we'll 
www.flyfishing.com. Ooh, that's a hard one. Women on the Water, flyfishing.com. There's more news coming from her at the end of the month. It's going to be ground shaking. So, down to the last part of the video before we run the scroll, which nobody seems to watch. I might just take that off coming in the spring. Who knows? Just keep it local. This last thing is a little tip for you that fly fish and you that don't. You want to spend as much time on the water, right, as you possibly can. Well, I have a friend who is a, let me see if I can say this word, Akamamaniac. 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 Maniac. That is a person who's into knives. And from him, I learned that it's uh, not always necessary to put your knife uh, up to um, a hard sharpener. Like I use, I'm a real simple guy and I don't spend a lot of money. I bought this one, it was like 20 bucks. Spyderco's uh, sharpening system. Very easy, very effective ceramic, uh, ceramic sharpening stones. Very nice. That's when you need to sharpen a really, really dull blade. Here is the tip. What you can do is, you know they've changed the flight patterns over here? Can you tell that they've changed the flight patterns over the years? This is amazing. So what you can do, if I have to holler over the jets, is instead of doing going to the stones, use a strop. This strop, leather strop on here, glued onto this wood thing, the wood handle. And this comes from Tandy Leather Company. So Tandy, thank you Tandy. And that green stuff on there is actually your sharpening. Um, it's made by Sharpall, and it is your compound, your sharpening compound. So what I do is you rub that sharpening compound in there, and then you just you can pass like like if you got a knife like here's what I carry or something akin to this. I don't carry very expensive knives, but like that's my knife. Carry one of my carrying knives right there, and so that knife. It's good steel, bench made. You just pass it, you don't even have to put you don't even have to put this on there every time. What you do is you just take it like this, pass it along like that, pass it along like that a couple of times. I promise you, yep, that will shave hair. So if you don't wait too long to sharpen your knife, try the strop. And you can do this, this translates into fillet knives. If you're if you're a fish fillet person, this is what you need. One of these strops. And you just sharpen it before you before you fillet every time. And here is this, and that'll be down. Uh, there'll be a link to some of this stuff down in the um, description. Wow, dang, that was good and fast. Let's see if there's anything else on my list to talk about here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So let me just give you the last notes here on the report. If you do actually take time to look at the scroll of TPWD report, you'll see that I've highlighted some interesting things in red on this report. I think that uh, there's something going on there, and I would like you to go ahead and look at the scroll and, and say something about uh, to me about what you think about the legitimacy of these guys and things that are highlighted in red. Apparently, whoever has a state contract and is paid by the state of Texas is dropping names of guides and their businesses into the reports because they're providing him, her, with the information. Uh, you know, I don't know, does that sound right to you? I don't know. It's been years and years that, this, that these reports have been coming out and it's never had this information in it before. I don't know where they got the information, but it wasn't as good as it is now either. These reports coming in from these guides are more accurate and more unique week to week than they used to be. It used to be cut and paste, I think. They just, it was just not very good at all. The big discrepancy in these reports as you watch them is temperature. And of course, when it says fair, that means poor. And when it says good, that means fair. You know, everything's overrated. But check those water temperatures on the Texas Gulf Coast, why don't you? It's pretty, pretty amazing how um, there seems to be like a lag time or discrepancy there. And the temperatures don't change that radically on the coast day to day. All right, guys, I appreciate your watching. This will be broken down for later consumption from the long version to the short version. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like to the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel. And guess what? We've got a major announcement. Going to be talking more about it.
Patreon is coming on board for me and I'm going to start having different videos on Patreon so be sure and stay tuned for that and uh, if you get a chance go over to Patreon and look at patreon.com slash flatfishing alright guys <laughs>